Hey y'all, welcome to the Healing Space Live and Online Chats with Roxanne and Rhonda, the podcast where guests will share information and research on self-love, living a wellness-filled life, how to heal from traumatic events, and more. This podcast is sponsored by Healing Hearts and Minds Publishing, LLC, a new company that publishes books that promote self-love, healthy relationships, avoidance of unhealthy relationships, and much, much more. Check out their first publication, Unhealthy Relationships, Let's Stop the Madness, a guide for those in unhealthy relationships and for those who want to help them. Written by first-time author and co-host of The Healing Space Live and Online, Roxanne Elizabeth Epperson. Visit Amazon.com to purchase the paperback or ebook. Enjoy the show. Good evening and welcome to the Healing Space Live and Online Chats with Roxanne and Rhonda. I hope you have been tuning in because we have we have now had several podcasts that have been uh, aired on Thursdays, 5 p.m. on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Pandora. So we hope that you are listening in to our topics. Roxanne Epperson is the host and founder of Healing Space. It used to be an in-person uh, seminar like that took place, workshops, I'll say, that took place. And a lot of women have come through her doors. It wasn't at her house, but, you know, through the doors <laughs> of Healing Space. And they have really been able to share some testimonies with Roxanne of how she has helped them. Not only because of COVID, also because of Roxanne's desire, Healing Space is now Healing Space Live and online. So it is the podcast that we are doing now. Again, when did I say? Every Thursday, 5 p.m. So we're hoping again that you are listening in. We're doing something a little different today. We're going to turn the mic to our very own founder and host, Roxanne. And I, the co-host, Rhonda, chats with Roxanne and Rhonda. I'm the Rhonda part. We'll be interviewing Roxanne. So this is going to be real and organic. There is no script. I have not given Roxanne any questions. She did ask, but I haven't given her (laughs) any questions to think about in advance. So it's going to be a conversation. I just mentioned that through Healing Space, the workshops, Roxanne has touched more lives than we really know right now. Um, Because see, when you touch one life, you're touching more than one. Mm -hmm. Because they tell somebody who tells somebody who tells somebody. And that's what we're going to hope you do after this podcast as well. So tonight, she's going to do it in a different way. She's going to help you on your journey as she continues on her journey. I'm going to start off by just sharing some statistics with you. Um, Before I do that, remember that the focus of Roxanne's program, which is war, women against abusive relationships, is always at the focal, the focal point of it is always intimate partner violence and domestic violence. And healing is her primary, primary focus all the time. So we know it's a journey and everybody's on a different part of the journey at different times. However, you can heal from intimate partner violence. You can survive intimate partner violence. So now I'm going to share some statistics with you that are, I say alarming. Mm -hmm. Uh, I say devastating. I say sad and also true. 25, 25% of marriages have ongoing intimate partner violence. Mm. One out of three teenagers who are dating have had a physical violence occurrence in their relationship. 50% of all women will suffer a felony level assault from an intimate partner in their lifetime. Mm. And another statistic that breaks my heart, and it's funny, not funny, ha-ha, but when I say these are statistics, it sounds like something that, okay, a, a researcher did some research and wrote them up, but these are real people's lives. Mm-hmm. This is their story. This is not just something in a book that you read about. And the other one that really breaks my heart is that every three days in Pennsylvania, a child loses their life at the hands of domestic violence. Mm-hmm. And the, one of the things that breaks my heart, the sadness of the 
truth about it, yes. But it's also preventable. Mm -hmm. There is help. And as a uh, victim survivor, you can get help. And those who use power control abuse, you can get help too. So at this point, I'm going to start with just asking Roxanne some questions. And Roxanne, you know me. I'm going to just go there. I'm just going to start out with it. So I said that 50% of all women will suffer a felony level assault at some point in time in their life. Can you share with the audience the instance where you actually suffered a felony level assault? Hmm. Now, that's funny you ask that because I never realized that it was a felony level assault. The night when I was home, when I was strangled, mm -hmm. I never thought of it like that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, my life was almost taken in an abusive relationship. Um, we had basically broke, broken up, but he was still living with me because he was a bum. <laughs> <laughs> I said it's going to be organic. <laughs> and I was still trying to be kind and let the fool stay with me, you know, a little longer until he found some place to go. And in, in, that, in between that time, um, this woman that he had become friends with, and I knew her, mm -hmm. I knew they were becoming friends, and I didn't have an issue with that because I'm not insecure about a male having a female friend. Mm -hmm. But I could tell that it was turning. And after we broke up and he was still living with me, she called the house one day and I asked her if they were having an affair. Mm -hmm. And she kind of stuttered a little bit. And she said, well, no, she said, but feelings are being developed. She was honest with me. And I'm like, okay, you know. And um, I, I don't know, remember if that was the time or not. But anyway, when he came home, I mentioned to him that I had this, I talked to her and it just got ugly after that. Mm -hmm. um, I acted like I had a telephone in my hand and I acted like I was going to throw the telephone at him. But at the same time, I had a smile on my face. It's like okay. really weird, you know. Yeah. And he just jumped on me and started spitting on me. And uh, that that was to me the most gross thing, yeah. spitting on somebody. Yeah, you know, that, that's horrible. It's it's and I'm I'm gonna let you go right okay. there. It is the one thing that no matter when I'm doing a training, whether I'm working in high schools or any age. When you say spitting is a form of physical abuse, people are like spitting. Oh, no way, no way. Look, the first time it happened to me, I was nine years old, but I digress. Uh, okay, wow. little, little boy was liking me and I didn't like him back, so he spit on at me. At nine years old. At nine years old. So this fool spits on me. And I always tell people it was so gross, it felt like a cup of spit. That, and just how much, uh, who has that much spit in their body? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, um, so it progressed to, he drug me down this hallway. Um, and when I woke up, I was sitting on the side of my bed. So I don't even know when I blacked out. I think he punched me because there was a scar on the side of my head right here. So I'm thinking I must have blacked out. I, I don't know, Wanda. I, mm -hmm. I, I blacked out. But then this is what I realized the next day. I couldn't swallow. Uh, it hurt to swallow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, that fool was choking me. Mm -hmm. That's when I blacked out, mm -hmm. probably mm -hmm. when he was choking me. Strangling you. Strangling, thank yeah, you. Strangling yeah. me. Yeah. And it, it was a while, because I used to, I thought I had been out for hours, and someone said, Rox, no, you, if you had been out for <laughs> hours, you would have been dead, you know? Okay. But it just felt like that, because, you know, like I said, he was dragging me down this long hallway, right. and when I awakened, I was sitting on the side of my bed, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the jacket I had on was thrown on the floor. So I think he was trying to revive me. I probably mm -hmm. scared the crap out of him, okay. you know. Okay. But then when I woke up, the fool was standing there hollering and screaming at me. And I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what happened. Again, um, it was almost like I had been in a state of amnesia. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it was almost like I was awakened. Okay. You from know, this incident. From yeah. that incident. Uh -huh. It was almost like uh -huh. I came, it was like I came back to myself. Uh -huh. I'm like, Wow. So okay. I mean, that was a long version, but no, I appreciate that. Uh -huh. So I'm curious, Roxanne, because I know a lot of people listen, um, wonder, well, did that just happen out of the blue? What are some signs? Or is there anything that you can look back even now that you may not have known then? Mm -hmm. Is there anything you can look at and say, well, prior to this man, um, I think you refer to him differently. I'd call him the fool. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> so, but prior to that, um, assault happening. We're going to call it what it is. A lot of people say an altercation or an mm -hmm. incident. It's mm -hmm. assault. Okay. It's an assault. Mm -hmm. So prior to that assault, can you look back and say, there were these signs that I saw that I, I didn't pay attention to. I may not 
have put them in the right category or I didn't give them the right weight, you know, and I just thought, you know, as many of us do, oh, well, he didn't mean that or, well, he was drunk or, uh, well, I understand why he did it. I was really getting smart with him. You know, we tend to say those kind of things. So can you say that you saw some signs? <sighs> um. I don't know that I really saw signs. Well, well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, there were signs. And I'm trying to think how to, how to articulate them. Um, one in particular was he told me that he asked women one question and they tell him anything he wants to know. Hmm. I, I know. I, of course, he wouldn't, he wouldn't tell me what the but question the, yeah, was. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. All I can remember is that made me have a flashback to when we was courting. Mm -hmm. On the telephone, you know, you had the little moments and you're on the phone all night. And I'm like, oh, wow. So we're on the phone all night. And I'm like, wow, what did I say to that man to make him think that my self-esteem was so low? Mm. I have no clue what I said to him. Mm -hmm. And because he even told me that my self-esteem was low. And I'm like, I'm one of the most confident people I know. Where Where is this coming mm -hmm, from? Mm -hmm. you know? So I, I think at that time he was, um, uh, was is that part of the gaslighting? No, that's not part of the gaslighting. But something, I, I don't know. I don't okay. know where that was coming from. Okay. But yeah, that and I do remember I called, his sister called the house one day. Okay. And I asked her, um, does he have a reputation for being abusive? And I didn't know a whole lot about abuse then at right. the time, you know. Right. She says, well, but she said, well, no, but he did, he was arrested mm. for, um, how did she put it? Oh, no, she said some woman did stab him. And I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. She didn't just stab him for no reason. Okay. She was probably trying to get him up off of her okay. because that's just who he is. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's a glowing red sign, a red flag. He had five or six siblings mm -hmm. and they all had different fathers. Okay. So he referred to women. He said, every woman in Pittsburgh is a stupid bee. Mm -hmm. That was a flag. Yeah. That, that, yeah. that was something yeah. I, I didn't pick up on. He told me he hated his mother. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that was a glowing red flag. Yeah. You know, he hated his mother because she had five babies swept by all these different men. Okay. And his older brother used to beat the crap out of him. His older okay. brother was the, the father figure. Mm, okay. You know, so yeah, those were some red flags that I did not pick up on. You don't love your mother. Mm -hmm. For real? Mm -hmm. Every woman in Pittsburgh is a stupid mm -hmm. bee. I'm like, for real? Yeah. You know, those, yeah, those were some red flags. Yeah. So speaking of the word red flags, and we're going to go back and forth because Roxanne, as I said, Roxanne has come a distance on her journey. And we know people are at different places in their journey. So can you just talk a little more about whether this was, it didn't have to be particular for you. What are some red flags? So you just named some that you realized later in life for him. Do you have anything on your mind that you can think about that are other red flags for people to think about? I, I can I can think of one um, in my situation, um, the isolation, trying to isolate you from yes. family and friends. Oh, yes. He did that twice in two different incidents. Mm, okay. um, we're at a cookout. I go to the bathroom. We get home later that night. He tells me that they were, my girlfriends was talking about me like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he wouldn't tell me what they said or who said it mm -hmm. because it didn't happen. Right, right, right. Another time we was at my um, best friend's house, always had the house parties. You know how you out on the patio <laughs> in the kitchen, everybody sitting on the floor having a good old time. We get home. Again, he tells me um, that one of my friends was playing footsies with him. Uh, under you know at, yes. at the bar we're sitting yeah. on the floor I'm like she don't want to she got a good man <laughs> <laughs> you are not worthy yeah. of her okay you okay. know so yeah yeah so those were some red flags um isolation and um, yeah okay for sure some of the other things Roxanne also said was the name calling you know you know and we know that people have different trauma behaviors, mm, I'm sorry, traumatic events that have happened to them when they were younger, such as that he had to have reasons for not liking his mom. And, you know, he put his mom in the category of because she had uh, children by different men. You know, she was a certain type of women, you know, a woman, you know. So those can be warning signs for sure. And whereas when we look at people who use power, control, and abuse, and we can recognize that and recognize that they had some traumatic things 
it's still not an excuse. Mm. It still doesn't make abuse acceptable or okay. That's mm-hmm. what we want you, our audience, to think about and pay attention to. You know, and Roxanne said he would tell her, you have low self-esteem. And she knew she was confident, you know. So we're going to lead into talk a little bit about uh, gaslighting. You know, for people not familiar with the term gaslighting, gaslighting is when someone tries to make you believe something that's not really true. Mm-hmm. I have an example I'm going to share, Roxanne, and I'm going to come back to ask you something about gaslighting as well. But a friend of mine who was in an abusive relationship many, many years ago, as a school teacher, she was very organized. And the night before, she would have everything laid out. You know, they had three children. So she would have the lunch bags, the backpacks, her car keys. And, you know, she was a teacher. So the lessons that she would, everything was organized. She was a very organized person. Her husband at the time did not want her to work. He didn't want her to work outside the home. Mm-hmm. You know, so as um, Roxanne just men- mentioned, isolation, mm-hmm. trying to get you away from people, places, and things, trying to get you away from um, your family, your children, your church, hobbies, and your job or anything, right? So she had everything laid out and was ready to go to work the next morning. So she gets ready to go out the door and she can't find her car keys. Mm. Her loving husband says, honey, oh, I'll help you. Oh, come on now. You don't want to be late for work. Let me, let me help you. Let me help you find your car keys. I'll look here. You look over there and I'll look here. So he proceeds to help her mm. look for these car keys. When she's in a different part of the house, remember he told her, I'll look here. You look there. Mm. So she's in the ho- part of the house where he suggests that she look for the keys He goes, and you all know where I'm going with this story. He goes and he put the keys right back where she originally had them the night before to be prepared. And then he says, honey, honey, come here. Your keys. Honey, your keys are right here with everything else. Like I said, I think it's getting to be a little too much to try to maintain a family and a home and work. I think you really need to think about that. See, he wanted her to believe that something was wrong with her, Mm -hmm. that she had too much on her and she couldn't do all this, right? Mm -hmm. Gaslighting, trying to get inside your head, your brain, your mind, and make you believe something that's not true, but will serve the purpose of this person continuing to use uh, intimate partner violence, abuse, power control, and especially mental abuse. You know, right before I asked Roxanne Mm -hmm. this next question, a lot of times people will say mental abuse, they'll say, well, people minimize and will say things like, oh, he likes to play mind games. Mm-hmm. You know, I love games. I'm competitive. I like to play cards. I mm-hmm. like to play board games. I love games and I like to win. Mm-hmm. I will say that I like to win, right? However, I don't like to play with your mind and nor is someone playing with your mind a game. Mm-hmm. It's not a game. It is serious. So how, Roxanne, and whether it was with this same person or anyone else you care to share with us this evening, um, Mind games, gaslighting, anything that you can say. Now, you said some red flags that sound like, you know, they was leaning toward gaslighting. Anything that you can think of, the low self-esteem was one for sure. Anything else around the lines of mental abuse, because you definitely described some serious and um, harmful or hurtful uh, physical violence. Yeah, I just remember what after I came, after I came to, mm-hmm. <laughs> after, you know, when I woke up, I remember asking him, um, if he was trying to brainwash me. Mm-hmm. And of course he said no. Mm-hmm. And at that time I knew nothing. I didn't know what bright, um, gaslighting or anything was, but uh, you know, to that, I don't know how, to, how far it went. I have to go back in my memory bank, which I've blocked a lot of it out. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, um, it protects us. Yeah. yeah. I, I have, it, it's amazing that even writing the book, I, you know, I remember a lot and then there's other pieces that I just can't remember. So I don't know if I really, really, truly experienced gaslighting or not, but, um, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Thanks for mentioning your book because we're certainly going to make sure we let the audience know about your book, oh, the you. title of it and where to purchase it. Purchase. That means you're going to go buy one, I hope. So we're <laughs> going to let you know about that in just a minute. So, so we've talked about physical violence and we just touched on mental abuse, the mind games, trying to get in your head and gaslighting. So all the other types of abuse that happen in intimate partners, uh, relationships as well, that where it's uh, uh, someone using power and control. You know, so there's the verbal abuse, the put downs, you know, there's the emotional abuse, you know, trying to make you feel really low and feel really bad. And then there's sexual violence as well, sexual abuse. And yes, yeah, sexual abuse happens with married couples. Sexual abuse happens with people 
uh, in intimate relationships. And sexual abuse happens with people who are co-parenting or are parenting together as well. You know, um, I work, as I mentioned, I work with teens a lot, not teen mothers, particularly teen parents, mothers and fathers, um, but I work with teen, teen parents and I let them know just because you have a baby with this person, they do not own your body. They do not mm -hmm. own rights to your body. Mm -hmm. um, and you still have the right to say no. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you might want to share around sexual abuse or sexual violence? <laughs> I have a history of experience with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the first occurrence happened when I was six years old. Wow. And this is one I just tell young mothers, please be careful who you leave your babies with. Okay. Because this was a babysit babysitter who violated me. Wow. She made me suck her breasts. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I never told her, I never, she threatened me that if I told anybody, she was going to punch my face off. I'm mm -hmm. six years old. Right, right, right. I, I never mentioned it till I was in my mid forties. Ooh, Roxanne. I never told anybody. It's a long time to live with that, so that to suppress the trauma like Wait that. a minute. The funny part is I thought maybe I made it up. Okay. When I finally decided yes. to talk about it, I'm like, did that really happen? Yes. And then I said, I, my little six-year-old mind did not make that up. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> she did that to me. Yeah. You know, her name is Liz in okay. Baltimore. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, we put a call for the shout out. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of Liz's in Baltimore. <laughs> yeah, because I have no clue. Don't know her last name. If she was standing here right now, I wouldn't know who she was. Or if she's even still living. If she, I mean, you know, I have no clue. Yeah. And but um, yeah, she know if she if she happens to hear this, she'll know who she is. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But but for all of the people in the world who do that, whether it's that person that person in Baltimore, whomever, who violated you at such a young age, whether they hear it or not, somebody else is hearing this right now. And whether it is you are the person who has been violated, you know, please know that there are helplines and hotlines yes. and there are places that you can call. We'll share some phone numbers with you at the end, but there are de definitely places where you can call to get help. And we want to encourage you at six years old. You don't know how to do that, right. you know, um, but um if a child happens, you know, because we come on at 5 p.m., a family may have just picked their kids up from daycare or uh, school and they're on the way and you're listening to us. So um, in all honesty, I say this to a child, you know, find a trusted adult, mm -hmm. find someone who you can share this information with. You know, Roxanne blocked it out for many, many years. And it's a good thing that our bodies and minds will work in a way like that mm -hmm. because they will protect us. They, it's just like this invisible mechanism inside of us that will help protect us from us, from things that have harmed and hurt us growing up. So sometimes it's like we have to disassociate ourselves from right. the reality and the truth of what has really hurt us like that. Okay. Yeah, what I told my, my little great niece when she was five, she's now 13. If somebody touches you inappropriately, yeah. you tell your mother. And I don't care if they threaten you or not or threaten to hurt your mom. Yeah. Don't listen to them. You tell your mother anyway. Weeks later go by, I say to her, What's going to happen if you, if somebody touches you? She said, tell mommy anyway. Uh, okay. Like, good, yeah. good. You're listening. You're listening. Yeah. So yeah. fast forward to um, age 13, I was, my virginity was taken by rape. Oh, wow, Roxanne. That was horrible. Yeah. Um, and then, um, then at age 16, uh, a train was pulled on me. Oh, Roxanne. Can you describe that for the audience who might not? Multiple, yeah, I know, because there's different meanings. I know terminology changes, mm -hmm. but that's more than one person um, mm -hmm. taking turns, if you will, have raping you. Yeah, 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 exactly. More, yeah. more than All one what it is. raping you. Yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. So that happened to me, and then um, an occurrence with the jitney driver. Um, <laughs> he's dead now, but ugh, um, he drove me, and it was so where I was living. Where I ended up living at, I'm like, well, I think that's the area where that man had me coming mm. up this wooded area, and he wanted me to, and I'll be, I'll say it nicely. Before, <laughs> <laughs> he wanted me to massage his penis. Okay, and I said no, mm -hmm. and he said, I said, rub it, damn it. Mm. So we're in this dark wooded area. You're sixteen. No, this time, no. By now, I'm, I'm in my, no, I'm grown now. Okay, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an adult now. Okay, um. So yeah, this crap is just no wait a minute, wait a minute. How old was I? I have to think back. Well, we've you know we heard what? six years old, 13, that, 16. That was 18. Mm -hmm. No, because no, no rapes have the rapes stopped 
you know, by then, then it went into domestic violence. So, so yeah, I was 18. 18. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and the reason why I got confused because when I was living in that area, I'm now an adult okay. in that area. Yeah. 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 Look familiar, but no, yeah. Um, I was 18. And, um, so I, <laughs> uh, when I do, I've described this in workshops, I, I'll do it here too. Okay. <laughs> so, he says, I said, rub it, damn it. So I took my fingers like this and I said, Tch. okay. And I'm like, if that's, if that's what you get off on, you're just a sick individual, wow. you know? So I, I didn't do it like, I don't know how you, but yeah. I was like, oh, that was just so gross to me. Yeah. Well, one thing that we know though, that rape is about power and control. Right. You know, rape is not necessarily for the fantasy of the feeling, but it's about power and control. You know, even when you talk about being six years old and someone violating you, you know, um, this person knew that she had the power over you, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so it's not necessarily about the sexual pleasure as much as it is about power and control, which is why I just mentioned that it also happens in uh, relationships. And I really want to say mm. this to everyone, and particularly age 16 through 24 is the age group who reports teen dating violence or intimate partner violence more than any other age group. And I just want to talk about the fact that oftentimes that age group, um, there's things that can happen to us that we, we minimize or might think, well, it's okay, or they didn't mean it, as I said earlier, but um, it again can be, it's about the power. And people in our relationships will use that type of power over you, mm -hmm. even when you're in a relationship. That's why I say sexual abuse, you know, it's even them. I got to pause just for a second. I know it's not a commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to pause for a second because we have been very gender specific and we've talked a lot because obviously we're talking to Roxanne's cisgender heterosexual woman. So we are talking about her and her relationship. But I would be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that women can be abusive also. Mm. Women can abuse in same sex relationships. Mm -hmm. Women can abuse and can and do mm -hmm. abuse male partners as well. And we know that intimate partner violence, teen dating violence happens in the LGBTQ plus community as well as it does in cisgender relationships. So I don't want anyone listening to us get ready to turn off the radio, turn um, Pandora, Spotify off because we're not addressing you. We want to be open to say, we know, mm -hmm. we know that intimate partner violence happens in all relationships. Mm -hmm. We know but regardless of ethnicity, socioeconomic status, gender identity. We know regardless of religion, that intimate partner violence happens in all relationships. So we're going to pause just to give you a phone number right now. And we're going to give you um, the national hotline number, 1-800-799-SAFE, S-A-F-E. I want to look that up because I think I know about heart, but you know, nowadays everything is in your phone, one 800 799-SAFE, and we're going to look that up to verify that for sure. In our area, and we're Roxanne and I, we come to this um, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We are hoping and waiting to know that we are global. So <laughs> we uh, just are going to give you a local number, um, which is to the Women's Center and Shelter of Greater Pittsburgh. And their hotline number, they have a 24-hour hotline, and their 24-hour hotline number is 412-687-8800. Zero five. We're fortunate in our um, surrounding area of Allegheny County, which is where Women's Center Shelter of Greater Pittsburgh is. There is another shelter in Allegheny County, other shelter and other programs that may not necessarily have shelter. And we don't want to focus on this just shelter, but there's other services that these programs work all, um, offer also. But Beaver County, Butler County, Washington County, um, Greensburg County, and uh, all have programs. And wherever you are listening, there is most likely a domestic violence program somewhere near you or at least a hotline. So we want to emphasize, if we don't do anything else today, two things we want to emphasize. Roxanne's boldness and braveness to share her story. Um, because you notice she said she was six years old the first time she was violated and in her 40s before she first talked about it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing. And the second thing we want to encourage you to do certainly is reach out to somebody. Tell somebody, you know, it's not your fault, regardless of what the person who uses abuse and violence, regardless of what that person may be telling you, it is not your fault. 
So I want to turn back to Roxanne. Thank you all so much for uh, bearing with us on that. But I want to turn back to Roxanne because um, this is May, which is Mental Health um, Awareness Month. And traumatic events, post-traumatic syndrome, post-stress PTSD, post-traumatic stress syndrome, you know, on all of that, um, that can happen from traumatic events. And, and I think, again, Roxanne, I really truly thank you. Roxanne and I were good friends. I don't want to sit here and sound like I'm the interviewer <laughs> and don't know her. This is my buddy, y'all. Right, right, and right. we've talked a lot, but I'm really honored tonight. I'm, and I mean, you know, I don't like to blow smoke. I mean, I mean, it. I really thank you for sharing this um, on our podcast. Yes. I really do. And um, I want to turn though, because as I said, um, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So can you share, if you don't mind, um, how this has impacted you emotionally and through mental health ways? And have you done anything to address that? Well, actually, um, I was asked to do a, a, a four-minute video for Mental Health America. Mm. And um, if you don't mind, I'd like to show it to the audience okay. right now. Please do. Okay. So... Greetings. My name is Roxanne Epperson, and I am a survivor of teen dating violence, domestic violence, and multiple rapes. Because of this, I am passionate about helping women and girls heal after suffering the same. And I didn't realize how much this abuse impacted my mental health until I was around 35 years old. I'm now 65. And when I reflect on the abusive relationship that almost ended my life, I realized that I experienced gaslighting and I had been in a state of amnesia for nearly three years of a three and a half year relationship. I don't know how to explain it other than the night that he almost killed me, he had punched me in my head. And it might sound weird, but I feel like that punch awakened me like in the movies or a cartoon when somebody's punched and they, they, they're blacked out and go through this state of amnesia and they have to be punched again to be awakened. And that, that's how I feel. I feel like that punch snapped me back into my old self and I became mission driven to help victims of abuse. So, and my main message to victims and survivors is you did not deserve it and it was not your fault, even if the perpetrator says it was. And I strongly encourage you to seek a therapist. Um, I went to therapy, I tried it four times. It, it didn't really work for me, mainly because the first person wanted to throw me on pills after a one hour consultation. And the next two, um, it was just kind of, well, one was too inc inconvenient for me to get to because I don't drive. One, I went to the Women's Center and Shelter of Greater Pittsburgh, and we had such a good time laughing and talking. I, I, I don't know whatever happened to that one. I think maybe she just didn't think I needed therapy, whatever. But I enjoyed those two sessions. And then I had a fourth one that I went to that I did not feel... I'll just say I didn't feel the love from her, so I, I didn't go back. But I strongly encourage you to seek therapy. And my therapy was starting my own nonprofit. And um, so that, that was has been therapeutic for me because we help other women heal. So um, and I also want you to just ignore the stereotypes or the the um the stigma, the stigma that if you go to therapy, you're crazy. That, that is far from the truth. Actually, you're showing courage and you are taking the first step towards um, healing your mental health or taking care of your mental health. So the question is, how am I doing really? Today, I am really, really well. I've turned my sour lemons into sweet, juicy lemonade. I created a nonprofit that focuses on helping women and girls heal after being abused and educating the masses about domestic violence effects on all of us. I just published my first book titled Unhealthy Relationships. Let's Stop the Madness. It's a guide for those in unhealthy relationships and for those who want to help them. I'm getting ready to launch a podcast and an app addressing violence against women 
and girls. And my prayer is that anyone who is not really, really well today, like me, that you would begin taking care of yourself. Get rid of all the outside noise and do you. Thank you. Okay, so now that you've seen the video, I want you to know that I did, like I said, I attempted to go through therapy for the domestic violence. But what I've neglected to do was deal with the sexual assaults. Mm. And I've encountered more sexual assault than domestic violence. Wow. But for some reason, I've never dealt with it. But a couple of years back, I said, you, you really need to go to therapy to deal with that. But I just kept putting it on the back burner. Okay. You know, like, for example, I, I know, like, I could teach DV 101 all day long. <laughs> but I cannot teach sexual assault 101. Wow. Okay. I always brought in somebody from Pittsburgh Action oh. Against Rape to teach it. Wow. Jamie Posey Woodson was there at the time. And she was our resident every April. We would okay. have her come in. And she's talking about healing space when they did the workshop. Oh, so I'm she sorry. Said we yeah. had, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. had somebody come and she's referring to when she did the healing space workshop. Yes. That, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so um, I lost my train of thought. You had Jamie come because you could teach all day on DV one on ones, but the sexual saw has taken. Yeah, it. and so so then I just so I realized. Um, so so this Mental Health America they asked me to do uh, this video mm -hmm. that I just showed you, and it made me. It, it then they came back and asked me to do for sexual assault awareness month. Yes, and I'm like yes. wow, I really couldn't answer. They had four questions they wanted me to do okay. a thirty second video clips on. So I looked at him and I said, I don't know that I could do this because I've never really dealt with my sexual assault. Mm. But I was able to answer um, two of the questions and they're out on Instagram or whatever. But what this has made me realize is I'm always telling people to get therapy. <laughs> well, we can always teach somebody else. Tell, exactly. tell somebody else, you yes, should. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so I am on a journey now. There's a, I, I'm in another mastermind. And one of the young ladies mm -hmm. reached out to me a couple of weeks ago and said basically the same thing I said. She said, I'm 40 years old. And I wow. just told my mother that I was raped in high school. Wow. So I don't know what it's about to be 40. 40. We, we decide to get, get bold <laughs> when we turn 40. But anyway, so our Facebook group that we're um, developing um, or have started, our community, the, the, we're calling our participants Warriors. And it's okay. W-A-A-R, war, war. Acronym, acronym, I O R S, warriors. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be very transparent in that group. And I, 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 I scheduled what I thought was going to be my first therapy session at PAR, yes. Spark Action Against yeah. Rape. It, it was an intake session. Okay. I thought it was going to be the actual okay. session because I was doing a presentation that afternoon and I was terrified. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to have red crying eyes. I, I didn't know what to expect. But since it was an intake and she said, if they are so behind, it's going to be six to eight weeks before I can have my first oh, session. Okay. Okay. So what I'm, I'm going to be transparent through this process. Mm -hmm. um, I want to share in the group um, how, how it's going for me. And I'm hoping that other warriors will join me on this journey. Okay. In particular, the one that shared with me her, her story. As a matter of fact, okay. she's already looking for a therapist. Okay. So oh, good. yeah, she's looking for a therapist. I, I'm looking for a therapist, yes. you know, so we're going to go on this healing journey together. That's beautiful. And I'm hoping that others who are listening to us will do the same. Okay. Cause you know what? It's, it's time. It's, what, what, this pain, it has to go. Yeah. You know, but mm -hmm. I, honestly, I don't, I don't know that I'm really feeling any pain. And that, that's why I'm kind of nervous about going to therapy. Because you can get in touch with the pain. I, know, I, don't know, <laughs> I don't know what's going to come out, yeah, yeah. but it got to come out. Okay. It, yeah. it has to come yeah. out. Yeah. Wow, Roxanne. Again, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. This was Rhonda's idea and I, I appreciate it. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm I'm getting out, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, you wrote a book. You stepped out your comfort zone and wrote a book. I sure did. <laughs> Here it is. And it can be purchased on Amazon.com, Unhealthy Relationships, Let's Stop the Madness, a guide for those in unhealthy relationships and for those who want to help them. And the sister book prayerfully will be out in the fall. And it's um it's called Healthy Relationships. There is such a thing. You want to say why that's important to you? Because I, I want this madness to stop. I want this unhealthy relationship to stop. And it's very important for people to know that there are ways to have healthy relationships. Yeah. And didn't somebody tell you something about no? 
<laughs> oh, and 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 the reason th th this is why this was just so important to me because in one of my healing space workshops, we did a workshop called Healthy Relationships. There is such a thing, mm -hmm. and we did a little poll, and one of the women said, um, well, a couple of them said they didn't believe there was such a thing wow. because they had never experienced okay. it, okay. and I'm like, wow, that that really broke my heart because I'm thinking even if you've not experienced it, you mm -hmm. never even saw a healthy relationship. Wow, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. So, and and in my mind, in my you know, I I just. I just, in my naive mind, mm -hmm. domestic violence is going to be eradicated. And that's my naive mind. Okay, I know, I know. I know. Yeah. But I, I just think, and maybe in a hundred, I will probably never see it. It'll maybe a hundred years from now, mm -hmm. it will be, um, you know. So my goal is just to mitigate, do do whatever we can and to teach people how to help healthy, healthy relationships. Yeah. You know, because it's possible. And I do know people who have healthy relationships. Yes, indeed. As a matter we of fact. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Our um, podcast, if you've not seen any of them or heard them, because we they're on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. Our second podcast was on um, healthy relationships. So we had two couples come on. Yes. And, uh, one of them just happened, transparency. One of them was her brother and um, his wife and another couple um, who she considers family as well. But yeah. uh, it, it was just a joy. I, I smiled almost through the whole day on presentation. <laughs> they, they were funny. They were real. So, yeah. um, and we do plan on having some younger, they, with these couples were, out, for lack of a better word, the older couples, <laughs> <laughs> our age, our yeah. ages and stuff. So um, we will be interviewing some younger couples as well to get their yeah. perspective because uh, there's a, they're a totally different world than us. For sure. So, yeah. For sure. Well, that's a good place. I think, you know, we believe in natural conclusions. So I think we're winding down. Okay. Um, again, we thank you so much. This is Hill and Space Live and Online, Chats with Roxanne and Rhonda. We will always focus on relationships. We will always focus on self-love, self-esteem, self-care. Um, we will focus on uh, mental health awareness, you know, um, as well as um, we're looking for volunteers who would like to be a uh, guest on our yes, podcast. Yes, yes, yes. If you have something to share, please reach out to us. You can find us at info at warhills.org. <laughs> Info, I-N-F-O, at W-A-A-R-H-E-A-L-S dot org. Info at warhills.org. And I just wanted to make sure, that, what number did you give it? I think I was, you did I give it long. I, look, I peaked when you were talking. Now, uh, I gave the right number. Oh, uh, uh, did you say 799? I sure did. Okay, well, she gave you the right number. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's the number from memory, you all, because, you know, you get a phone number today, you don't know it, because you just put it in your phone and go about your business. Yeah. But that's way back. I remember that number from way back when. Yeah. So, um, but it was, it's worth repeating, though. It's, it's the um, national hotline number, 1-800-799-SAFE, S-A-F-E. Again, reach out to somebody, y'all. Tell somebody there is help. If you're a person who uses power and control, you reach out too, because you can stop the cycle. Wow. You can break the cycle. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Thank you for listening. Um, and we have a way that we close every week. So even though Roxanne was a guest, she is actually still the host. So we want to make sure that you know we, we got, got your back. back. Hey, thank you. <laughs> Here are two things we would like you to do. Number one, enter our monthly drawing by sending your email address to info at warhills.org. Spelled out, that is I-N-F-O at W-A-A-R-H-E-A-L-S dot org. Put drawing in the subject line. We will notify the winner or winners via email by midnight on the last Thursday of each month. Our second request, engage with us on IG. Follow, like, and subscribe to all of our social media platforms at Warheels underscore on IG, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. W-A-A-R-H-E-A-L-S underscore on IG, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. As always, we thank you for listening and see you next week.